Hi guys, it's Tiffany. I'm over here on my own channel with my best friend, Kim. Hello. And we're gonna go over um, our notes on Sleepy Hollow. Yes. So I was so confused when it started. Oh my goodness. I was out in left field, like I was a little bit angry <laughs> because they started and a year later. I know. And not only that, well, first off, I have to say, I love the beginning. The birthday thing, fantastic. It was good. But Until I found out it was a year later. <laughs> yeah, but then I found out it was a year later. I'm like, did, did I miss an episode? Because I kind of binged it yesterday. I didn't watch all of them, but I did watch the, like, the last two episodes. Because I was like, at least get those out of the way. I missed some of the filler episodes, really. Um... But I want to go back and watch them anyways. But um, I was confused because I was like, I thought I watched the last. What happened? Did I not watch the last one? Or like, I got really confused. Like, I felt like something was missing. Like, I could have sworn I watched the last episode and he, nothing. Like, he was in the box or in the grave. And I'm like, what happened? I, right? I was like, he just got buried alive. Why did we not see any of the rescue? I love the opening scene. And then when I find, like, it took, the, the, it, this was like the longest introduction without a commercial, I swear. It was like almost 20 minutes into the show and not a single commercial happened because it, it was, it was so like, it was trying to get to the, the, the point where it, you're like, oh my gosh, I knew it. Yeah. And what, once they got to the point where you realized this was all a dream and it was all a manipulation from, um, his son, I'm blanking on his name, um, I just call him Walter because that's what he was in um, Fringe. Uh, and what was it called? Fringe. Yes. And that's all I know him as. I can't remember his name, but it is, it's, it's Ichabod's son. And once I realized it was a manipulation, I'm like, what? I'm, I kind of like the, the, I mean, I, I like the fact that they manipulated it and then went back um, to where we are. But I'm like, I got so confused at the beginning because, like I said, I, did, I skipped a few episodes and then I watched the finale, the last two episodes, and I'm like, I must have done something wrong. <laughs> right? I was like, I missed something or they're going to do a really lame job of filling in a whole year's worth of information. That's what I was worried And that's about. where I was worried. I was really scared mm -hmm. because I have never watched a show you remember when Alias did that, when they skipped a whole year, and it was the worst. They should never have done that. It was that. awful. Yeah, if they were doing that, I'm like, don't do that to me. Don't, I, that, too many TV shows have done that to me. Don't do that to me. Right. It's just the worst. Yeah, it's never but good. I love, what I love about this show is the disconnect between her in the 21st century and him from 200 some odd years ago. Like with the candle and the blowing out and the wish. <laughs> I love it when they do that. Like it just, it, <laughs> I can't help but giggle every single time. Yeah. And then yeah. like My at the end where he's like, oh, I have to learn to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's like a note, I need to learn to drive. That was so funny. My <laughs> like, you don't know how to reverse, do you? <laughs> no. And they switch scenes. Can I, can I real quickly tell you my favorite scene? But he's figured out how to use a cell phone, which is hilarious. I know. That was my favorite scene. I was going to say. <laughs> the scene where he's like, and none of that recorded. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Oh, that was so great. <laughs> I was sitting on the couch, like rolling, laughing. I, I mean, I was, so, I, that was the best part. And the thing with this show that I've, like, fallen in love with for sure, because the first episodes when, when I watched it over were a little slow, but the perfect timing of the actor and the comedy and the way he actually, like, honestly, I feel like the actor honestly believes he's from, like, this, this what is it, the 17th century or something? Or he the, does it I, also I, deadpan. Like, just completely straight-faced, perfect delivery i'm just he's amazing yeah he's actually Perfect he's actually timing. one of the better actors in the show i don't feel like the female the the main girl i don't feel like she's a very good actor at all i feel like she's actually pretty good compared to other the other ones in there though like i i wrote down in my notes 
Not a fan of Katrina. I don't like her. Yeah, because I kind of want Ichabod and what's her face to. Abby. They have so much chemistry. But then, like, I he's so I'm in love with his wife. Her, of course. But... You you knew always want him to be in. I mean, he, he's married to the girl. But I don't like her. And they don't have the chemistry that Ichabod and Abby do. No. And it's kind of, like, off-putting when they do get on screen. Because it's like... Because you see the chemistry with Abby and him. There's so much chemistry with those two. And then when he's with his wife, all of a sudden there's this, like, disconnect almost. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's off. I don't, I've never liked her character, even in the last season. I was like, I don't like her. Like, I understand that they're in love and they're married. Yeah. They have a son together. But, like, th so much has happened in between that that I feel like the actors don't get like I don't know if the actors don't get along or whatnot, but the actors don't have chemistry on screen, and yes. it really shows. Like it, it just really shows. Side note: Did you notice the six pack abs on the headless horseman? I sure did. <laughs> but did you not think it weird? A headless, shirtless man walking around. Yes, I'm like, is this weird <laughs> that I like? I'm looking at this guy's six pack abs. <laughs> I'm like, I felt like, why am I looking at this? He's got no head, but right? look at them six-pack abs. <laughs> Not only that, but you can see the bone and the muscle and everything. And then yeah. abs. <laughs> and then perfect six-pack abs. I'm like, what is going on here? And then all of a sudden, you, he, it shows his head, and I mean, he's not, he's, I mean, the guy's, I mean, not bad looking, but I'm like, I was hoping it was, like, somebody, that, like, gorgeous. Right? He's not as pretty as Ichabod. No, he's not as pretty as Ichabod, <laughs> but his six-pack abs are pretty pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. But I was like, the weirdest scene in the in the show was him was the headless ho horseman walking by with no shirt, six pack abs, and I'm like, I don't know if I should be enjoying this or if I should just be like grossed out right now. <laughs> should be turned on or freaked out? I'm not sure. I was both. It was an awkward <laughs> feeling. <laughs> weirdest lady boner ever. I <laughs> know it's such a bad one. It's 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 not a pleasant one at all. Overall, I thought this was actually a pretty good episode. I kind of think that, I don't know, the only thing I, I was kind of confused about is the end. The key couldn't be destroyed and then all of a sudden it just automatically disintegrates. <clears throat> I think it only had one use. Is that what it was? I couldn't under, like, I figured that was it, but I was like. I mean, they didn't go come out and say it, but I think that's what it was. Um, I thought it was a little convenient myself. Yeah, it's too convenient. Um, you know, that they couldn't destroy it, and then they used it, and it disintegrated. That was... But they had, I guess, they had to get rid of it somehow. And yeah. I mean, I just, yeah, I, I knew they had to get rid of it, but I felt like it was, it, like you said, convenient. I felt like it was too simple. It's kind of like a duex machina. Uh-huh. That's a word that I don't use a lot, and I can't pronounce it right. <laughs> I'm like, I was going to say, yeah, but then I'm like, what did she just say? What was it? Um, Duex mach Machina, God in the Machine. Oh, okay. I didn't know it's what that just, was. It was convenient. They needed to get rid of it, and they made a convenient way. They needed to get rid of it. Kind of like them. God randomly coming down and saving everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I just felt like it was too convenient. I yeah. was like, mm, they could have kept it around because they could have made things a little more interesting. Yeah. Also, their little, like, declaration of this is war at the end was really awkward. Yeah. I was like, that could have been written a little bit better. <clears throat> yeah. I it's like I've... those moments where I feel like she's not very, she's not good at the, like, super emotional scenes. Mm. I like she's her better really with... Good at the, the scenes with Ichabod like her it, when she's with Ichabod and talking about like personal stuff very good at it because that's where their yeah. chemistry is and that's where a right. lot of people are like into the show is her interaction and her mainly her funny interaction with Ichabod but right. yeah you're right the <clears throat> declaration yeah 
of this is war. I'm like, really? You yeah. didn't know that before? <laughs> Interesting. Well, you now you do. Now you do, but um, you didn't think a man trying to behead you was war before? <laughs> <laughs> Them spatting words. <laughs> Somebody needed to say it for it to be war. <laughs> I really thought they were fighting from the beginning. <laughs> I got confused at that, too. I'm like, hasn't this been war since, like, the second episode? Like, what? Hasn't the, hasn't it been, like, the, haven't they been in, like, a, some sort of war since the second episode? Like, I feel like yeah. it was just kind of, like, that scene, I actually watched it, and I was like, I feel like this is from the first season. Like, yeah. I feel like it's this was done like, in the first season. Yeah. It's a little late for that kind of declaration yeah 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 when I, really I, I now that you say that I, I did rewatch or when I was watching it I was like I feel like I've seen this before and I feel like or maybe I felt like it should have been said in the first season or I, I thought it was already said in the first season yeah but yeah but I actually like the writing was fantastic I love the writing for Ichabod I do too they have got that character down. It's like Sheldon and Big Bang Theory, the writers have got that character down. They really have to work on the other characters, but when it comes to that one character, they got it. Yeah. And definitely. he's the reason why everyone watches the show anyway, so why not focus on him? I do have to say, though, as much as I love his period costume, I wish they'd put him in some real clothes. I know. I do. But yeah, it's just something different and clean and something that doesn't look like he's been rolling around in blood and dirt. Yeah, like he was just buried alive and then he exploded himself and then yeah. he crawled through the dirt. And you yeah. can tell. <laughs> yeah, and he needs to get his hair washed. Yeah, it's getting oily. <laughs> it got really bad. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I understand, like, he, of course, he, I mean, he got buried alive. The last thing he's thinking of is shampoo. But... <laughs> That would be the first thing I thought of. <laughs> yeah, look at my hair. The clumps are just awful. <laughs> Where's the river? <laughs> no, I I know that that's the last thing that he's thinking of, but, like, in that scene where he's saving Abby's sister, and I am blanking on her name. Um, Gabby? Maybe? No. No. Abby. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. I, yeah, I thought it started with a G, but I, I don't remember what it is. Um, but he was, like, looking around the corner and then he looked back and the camera was right there and i don't know if it's the wig it's got to be the wig he can't have that long of hair like all the time but it was so bad that it was like you could see all of the dirt and all of yeah. the, the 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 like broken up leaves and then there was a ton of oil yeah it was that, that i i did notice they the did it with the, the oil i think it yeah was... the oil it was really oily like it looked like he had just like greased it up had a little treatment baby <laughs> yeah and left it in for too long <laughs> or did not wash it or rinse it out <laughs> no good <laughs> but yeah i i did you're right he does need to change his clothes for sure. <clears throat> and the and he needs a new hairdo or at least get it washed or something yeah. yeah. The 21st century has some great shampoo. I know. I really do. I have I have plenty of it if, if he needs some. I just bar did a bunch of unboxings. I'll send it over. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that was something that I did notice. I just, I hope that they, like, there's 18 episodes in this season. I did look that up. So it's not like a, a normal number. <laughs> but I feel... I feel like there's, like, hopefully there won't be a lot of filler episodes. Like, I feel like the last season had a bunch of filler episodes, even though yeah. it was only 13 episodes. And it really didn't get good until, like, the last couple episodes. Like, there were some really great moments, but it was, like, each episode had a beginning and end. And though there was, like, one, um, something that carried on to the other episodes, I feel like there was, like, kind of like Arrow. We're beginning Each and ending. Each told its story. Yeah, and I hope that they kind of make this one into like a longer story, because that's when the TV, you really get a hold of TV shows is when you have to watch the next one to see 
what just happened. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I'm looking at my notes. I got loved opening scene, quote, and none of that recorded. Wonderful. <laughs> And then I, I love said, that her cupcake for him was red, white, and blue. I know. <laughs> I did notice that. And I love, okay, the only other thing on here that I didn't say was that I love Abby and Ichabod's chemistry beyond anything. I think they have a lot more chemistry than he does with his wife. Yeah. So. Well, I don't feel like she's going to stick around much longer. I don't feel like she has any purpose anymore now that she's told everybody what they need to know, and she's no longer in purgatory. There's no reason to keep her around. <clears throat> I know, and I feel like they're going to keep her around. I don't know. Like, I feel like they are, but I really don't think they should. Her story's done and yeah. over. And I think that a lot of people, like, if they killed her off, I don't think a lot of people would be upset about it. I hate saying that about characters. She's not even really a secondary character anymore. Mm -hmm. she's and like I, third or fourth she's kind of just background noise yeah I feel like there's too much like she's kind of pulling the story in a way I'm not exactly excited about like I've the headless horseman having a crush on her for years and obsession with her I don't know if I like that yeah because that's where it's gone like the headless horseman is in love with her and it's kind of creepy <clears throat> in a not good way like I don't know I don't like it I feel like if she had done what she needed to do and then gone to a better place that would have been a better storyline for her and then they could really focus on like this and on like in this season getting stuff done but now they have to focus on saving his wife and it's like yeah. it's like it's a total like backtrack I don't like it like I, I feel like she's just more of a distraction than anything yeah. Yeah. Real quick, have you noticed that the guy who's supposed to be the Headless Horseman and um, the guy who's supposed to be the Headless Horseman before he lost his head, they're not the same in here? <laughs> in the chest? <laughs> yeah, like they're, they're, the Headless Horseman is bigger in the chest and the shoulders. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously. And it's just kind of weird to me. Yeah. I, I did notice that. I I you know I thought that the Headless Horseman was somebody... I, I, I must have missed the episode where they actually revealed who the Headless Horseman was. But, um... Because, like I said, I skipped forward. Yeah, they... they I, I had forgotten, but I remembered that they did tell us that it's that guy. And I don't like that. I just feel like... So he's trying to end the world over a woman, like. Yeah, and and that's where I feel like it's just so stupid, and I feel like she's backtracking everything. That character is like just useless, and it's just making the storyline a little less, mm, less attractive. Yeah, I feel like and when it's he is a pawn of Malik. He's, I mean, but still, it's like, it's just a little, it's a little much, I think. Yeah, I feel like that I I really do feel like that they're that they're the story is la is not lacking is is kind of just crumbling when it comes to like the the storyline with the wife. I I honestly just think the wife needs to go away. And I hate like I said I hate doing that to characters, but there's so much there's just a, a certain amount of time that a character can be useful until it, until they become like a hindrance to the actual story and right. she has officially become a hindrance to the story because now the headless horseman is obsessed with her and that's not the story that's not the original story he's supposed to be bringing the destruction and armageddon and all of a sudden whoops we don't have a storyline for the wife anymore let's make her the <laughs> oh. let, let's make them like you know let, let, let's make the headless horseman obsessed with her and it's like ugh. yeah I feel like that's just a very off-putting storyline. So. Excuse me. Uh, but anyways, I I don't. I'm pretty. I think I got everything that I wanted to say. Said it was a really good episode. I think that it that was, was just episode. fantastic. Loved the introduction. Got a little confusing, but 
It is weird for me to watch Walter not be Walter. Unintentional ones. Oh, come on. Damn it. I th he's so evil, though. He's he is. I mean, he's good. He's like, the first time I ever saw him was in Lord of the Rings. Yes. And then I saw him on French, and I was like, oh my God, that's the same guy. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. And now he's just evil. He's good. He's really good. And he's, his, like, the, <laughs> the part where he, like, reveals that he's tricking Ichabod and Abby, the way that he was, like, like the, what he was saying was evil and the actor was portraying pure evil and I was like what like I you know because you really didn't see that until that point I mean you saw it a little bit in the finale but like up until that point you didn't realize how evil that guy actually was and I'm yeah. excited I, I mean he's one of those characters that I'm going to love to hate and I hope he doesn't die because I love to hate him kind of thing yeah so like kind of like um well, you didn't get to the point. Um, well, Klaus was at one point for Vampire Diaries, but um, their father, Michael, he's so good at being bad. He's so good at being, like, hated that I love to hate him, and if he dies, I'm going to be like, I, <laughs> I want to hate him more. Bring him back. <laughs> I mean, that's a, true, that's a mark of a really good true villain. Is when you're yeah. you're so loved that you don't want them to die. You want them to continue being evil because they're just so darn good at it. And yeah. Walter was really good at being evil. Or not? Well, I know he's not. His name's not Walter. It's something else. Ichabod's son. Like, you know, but you know, <laughs> he was so good at being evil that it was just. I can't wait to see him in the next episode because yeah. he's just so good at it. But anything else you want to add? Nope, I'm done. I'm done too. I think that was a great episode. I yep. really can't wait for this. I'm excited episode. for next week. I know. Both for Gotham and Sleepy Hollow. I think that this is a great Monday night yeah. set for Fox. Fox has been really suffering on like the numbers wise, like with audience and pulling the audience in. So I think that this is a really good combination for them to get the numbers that they need to, you know, have a successful season. So I'm excited. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed our review of Sleepy Hollow. We will be back next week. Or bye. <laughs> or, or sooner. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I couldn't figure out what to say. <laughs>